Today, we're looking at chasing the high planes. All marginal risks out here aren't equal. So let's dissect when it's time to make those chase days happen. We'll take a look at it after the jump. Well, it's mid-May and there is a marginal risk out for eastern New Mexico, southeast Colorado, and the western panhandles. And you might say, a marginal risk? Why chase this? Well, on the high plains, when it comes to photography especially, marginal risk can really, really pay off. So that's why we're taking a look at this day. Kind of want to convince you that marginal risks are worthy of your consideration. Set up today in the upper air is that we have a nice trough that's located, the center of it's located here in eastern New Mexico, but it's going to be moving east. And then at the 500 millibar level, the base of that trough is a little bit further east, but still we're on the back side of a trough here today. So that's interesting. If you look at the 850s as well, decent uh, you know, stuff out there to the east, but here it doesn't look so great. And if you fast forward to 1630, marginal risk is still here. That area out there to the east looking interesting with a slight, but again, we're focusing on the high plains and a tornado risk. You see our area, zero tornado risk. So let's go. So as we are getting into the target area, you can see there's some really good dew points here in eastern New Mexico, southeast Colorado, some good upslope flow. These uh, mid to upper 40s into the lower 50s, really conducive in this area, especially this time of year. If you take a look at air temperatures, you can see our dew point depressions are gonna be about 30 degrees, which is not a disaster. You can definitely get good storms at 30 degree dew point spreads. And out here on the high plains, the visibility is so great. Photography opportunities, definitely there. Now, when it comes to picking a target area on a high plains chase day, you gotta kind of hug uh, terrain features. And today I'm targeting Northeast New Mexico with the Raton Mesa and the south end of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. So we can possibly get some decent storms off of these. If you take a look at the sky, I mean, this is pre-storm sky. Decent low cumulus, good sign of uh, that upslope flow ongoing. We're gonna get a storm any minute now, I can feel it. Now one note as we check back in on dew points, it kind of mixed down a little bit. That's to be expected, no need to panic. Temperatures are just a little bit warmer, so those 30 degree dew point spreads are coming to fruition. So high base storm. So anytime you see these dew point depressions in that 30 degree range, don't expect tornadoes typically, but you can expect still, you could get supercells, some big hailers, that sort of thing. And that's what we're after today. So sitting here in Northeast New Mexico, and we're gonna see what we can get. A lot of high plains days will ramp up slowly just because you might have a little bit of uh, limited instability, that sort of thing. Today's no different. These little storms are taking shape. They're taking their time, but we do have an MD out from the SBC. So let's take a look at what that says really quick. Oh uh, yes, the dreaded marginal risk watch unlikely MD. But you can see they're expecting SBC. They, you know, instability is limited, but there's some good shear. Expecting maybe some damaging winds, big hail. That's kind of the thought. Couple of storms, and it's going to move south and southeast. Looking forward to seeing what can happen today. Watching this storm take shape, you can see nice downdraft over here, good dark updraft base. And if you look on radar, it's still like a slow ramp up, but this thing is definitely increasing in intensity. Now here's an important visual cue to keep an eye on. You can see there's looks to be updrafts here, here, and here. And there looks like this, the details on this far updraft have started to get a little murky. That's because there's rain beginning to fall between us and that storm. We've got another storm developing a lot closer to us. Oftentimes on these upslope days like this, this does happen. No need to panic. But I do think there's a possibility we have another storm forming closer that could become the dominant one especially since it's on the south side of everything and these storms will be moving south and southeast. And a quick check on radar does confirm that. Just so you know, anytime you're looking at storm development, you get a bunch of storms forming. I always tend to go for the one with the cleanest inflow on the low levels. And this time that means it's the southern one. So it's pretty obvious now this southern storm is going to be the one big dark updraft base. Precip core is getting really dense. This is definitely, you see a time lapse, it's happening. Now the question is, we know we're chasing this one. What are our roads like? Well, high plains, it's always an interesting story, isn't it? 
Now the good and bad thing about chasing on the high plains, Colorado, New Mexico, Eastern Wyoming, is that there aren't many like county roads, like shortcuts. You just got highways, so you you know your decisions are pretty well limited. The storms right now between Springer and Abbott, it's going to move south and southeast. Obviously, we're taking Highway 39. It's that simple. Like there is no other option. And so I mean, when it comes to like road picking strategy, there's not much else to do. This is our storm. This is our road. Let's go chase. As if on cue, just after stopping my recording, saying this is going to be severe soon, there it is, severe thunderstorm. The storm's starting to get that really organized look to it with a nice updraft, downdraft, very visible, also very high base, but that is entirely expected. So the radar signature, very clear of when you pair it visually. We do have a supercell. And if you look, there's two storms. There's also two storms visual. This is storm A and this is storm B. Now, the one we're interested in, the one with the cleanest inflow, that would be storm A, which is the one we're looking at right here. Updraft, downdraft. And if you look at this, it's very high base. It's got that nice rugged look underneath it. This is definitely a storm you want to keep an eye on. Not for tornado protection, but definitely large hail. That hail is going to be falling over in here. Again, though, we only have a one road, so we can't really go sample that. But still, this is a pretty healthy storm. Some nice mamatas right there, just under this storm's anvil. And if you take a look at this pan across here, very small precip cord. This is not a big storm. That's owing to the very weak instability. But if you look and match this up with radar, it's a very small storm. This is not a big storm, but it is severe. Winds and hail are the threats. Pretty cool though, huh? So now this is a good time to take a look at what's going on underneath the storm. The storm, it looks like it's trying to lower its base. So again, this is storm A, that's storm B. If you look at storm B back there, there's a lowered area. What's going on back there? If you watch it over time, I'll speed this up afterwards, after I get done talking, you can see that stuff in the back is an outflow feature. It's moving out and away. It's continually advancing. So I wouldn't worry about that so much. If you sit and watch it, you can kind of tell that. But this here underneath storm A's updraft is interesting. Definitely pulling up some uh, scud trying to lower its base on a high base storm like this you really 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 need a good strong push of scud a big giant wall cloud but this one I'm afraid is just way too high base to get a tornado but it is something that you know I saw this and I was very very interested for a bit because this is how a high base storm does start doing some crazy things but at the end of the day this thing kept a really high base it was not close to producing a tornado Now one note, these storms are quite a ways away from the radar. So, you know, the fine details aren't really there, but what's becoming clear is that these storms are starting to really merge together. The whole thing's becoming more blocky. That's usually a good sign that outflow is going to start dominating the day. And I think this is no exception. As we speed this up and look at a time-lapse, you can see this storm, you can see both storms. It's really getting harder to discern which one's which. And that's, you know, that's just how it goes. Some days you win and outflow and this one looks like that's where we're headed right now so now you can see here this storm has really started to lose a lot of that detail as we get toward evening you can see underneath there's a really nice bit of blowing dust some good lightning you just saw too and you can see this thing looks a lot more outflow dominant now a lot of electricity though so this is a really fun scene to be shooting but at the same time like uh, you know, as we get as you get to evening, every storm has value. This storm has value with that lightning, cool scenery. But yeah, it's clearly an outflow dominant cell at this point. You know, the updraft's over here, but you can see that blowing dust. You can see how the winds are starting to really uh, blow out ahead of this thing. Ooh, that was nice, wasn't it? And then you get some down the downdraft over here. Sun setting back here, so yeah, this is going to be a really pretty scene.
Now my golden rule with storm chasing is I continue a chase after dark if I feel like there's something I can still improve upon the day. I'm not so sure that's the case and the big problem is is that I have no roads to this storm. This thing's moving more south than southeast, which means it's about to be a long way from the road. When we go back to the storm, you're going to see I've lost a lot of ground. It's way out there. So at this point, I think it's time to say bye to the storm with it getting dark. I don't think there's any way I'm going to improve upon what I've already gotten. So I think it's time to say bye. So as we take a look at this storm, it was a beautiful, beautiful chase day. This is obviously outflow dominant. I mean, this day's over with, but still great day. A lot of really good things you can take away from this day, in my opinion. Now, one thing about storms on the high plains is they tend to produce a lot of hell. And that's because you're at a higher elevation. We're driving through the storm's hell swath right now. And that higher elevation being close to the freezing level means you get like snow-like accumulations of hell out here. It's pretty cool. Nice lightning here on the left side. This is a nice drive home, I must say. And, you know, just thinking about chasing on the high plains. Uh, when you see a marginal risk out, especially starting about mid-May, and you go all the way into really August with this, if you see a marginal risk, there's good shear, there's enough uh, moisture and instability. Like today, had mid-40 dew points. That's plenty to get what we got today. So you got to ask yourself, are, you know, what are you out here for? If you're out here for good pictures, seeing beautiful storms, especially if you're on a chasecation, people tend to like want to, you know, not chase these type of days, but they're really good. They can be really productive. And as we round the corner, that nice dust sky, nice mamatus on the backside. I highly recommend chasing marginal risk on the high plains, especially when you have good share and serviceable instability because you can really end up being really happy with your day so i hope this video was helpful we'll have another uh, chase case coming up soon and it's going to be a tornado event so can't wait to show that one see you next time